So you guys are working on the score. And you do a lot of the production on there. Salam Remy does more production as well. I think Diamond D does a little something. You guys put this together, coming off of the first album that doesn't really do great. Did you have any idea what was going to happen with the score before you actually released it? No, it just felt good. You know what I mean? It felt good. And I was like, I knew this would, whatever Blunt it did, we was expecting it to do double that because of the artist development, right? The fact that we was out performing so much, we knew that when this album come out, people would be expecting to, um, they would at least give us that listen. Because keep in mind now, we ain't coming off of Blunted, we coming off of the Nappy Heads remix. Okay. So the intip, uh, uh, it was just different. Like people was like, okay, we knew we would get that one listen. What that one listen would be, I didn't know, you know what I mean? But it just felt good. Right, and that was, that first listen was Fuji La. Yes. When that dropped, it was just out of here instantly. I don't feel like there was a buildup for that song. I felt like it dropped and uh-huh. everyone was fucking with it. Uh-huh. And then the album goes on to go diamond or double diamond. Yeah. <laughs> Worldwide, what, what did it sell? Um, man, it's like, it's, it got to be over like three, three, close to three times diamond now. So 30 million. Yeah, it got to be close to that now. That's just a skull. You go from an album that doesn't even go silver. Okay, but this is so. To triple diamond. Yeah. So now this is another thing. Um, you know, I always like to put that glue in the middle. Fuji La. This beat was crucial. This beat wasn't for the Fujis. It's for Fat Joe. Yeah, so it's important. Fat Joe, I'm all the way up. It's important that people connect like, what? The Fujis? Fat Joe? You know? Um, and then when we heard it, you know what I mean? So it was, it was dope because Salam gave us that beat, but that beat originally was for Fat Joe. How did it feel when after all this? Because you were how old when... Um uh, in my 20s. In your 20s. Yeah, early but you, 20s. But you've been working on music for over a decade now. Yeah, since I've been like 13. Yeah. So oh, 10 years of work culminated in one of the biggest commercial albums of all time. Yeah. How did that feel? You have no time to experience it. Mm. Because, you know, you're moving fast, right? So... Other people is enjoying it for you, if that makes sense. Because you're moving so fast. Like when you're in that space of success, you ain't in the space of zen, right? You young, you fast, you want to be heard. So like you're constantly moving. So it's like if you had that space where you could be like, let me breathe, let me take this in, right? All you felt was excitement. That's just the word. Like you just felt excitement and I got to keep going. This is exciting. This is That's, that's the energy you feel, you know? Right, because now you guys are doing the biggest stages in the world, the biggest award shows, the biggest everything. The album ends up uh, getting a Grammy? Yes. Let me, let me see the score. One best rap album, mm-hmm. Grammy. Yeah, and, then, and I felt uh, like we should have won the album of the year on that one, but right, you were nominated. people still was trying to figure out what this hip hop thing was right. for the Grammys you know, okay. I mean, at the time. But you did get the best rap album, Grammy. Yeah, you also we got, got another, best uh, yeah. R&B performance yes. by duo for uh, Killing Me Softly. Yeah. So now you have two Grammys. Tens of millions sold. The biggest, you know, the biggest shows anywhere. Millions of fans all over the world since the music is somewhat international. It's not just American music. Yeah. Where did the tension start with the group? I mean, this is night. We're, we're talking about 1996. We're in 2017 now. I think like 20 something years um, where it starts with any group. You young, dumb, got a lot of money. And that's really it. So every kid, when you young and you youthful and you sitting on that cash, you're going to be moving around. You're going to constantly feel like. I'm better than you, I'm better than you, I'm better than you. It's just, this is a a natural tension which happens, right? And you have uh, three personalities. It's so easy to talk about this. I'm like 40 something. So we talking about a 20 year old white clef. Um, So that's really it, like with any group. I mean, you get a lot of money with a lot of success. You're gonna do a lot of dumb moves, you know? Well, you and Lauryn Hill started to have a romantic relationship. 
Yes, at a very young age, once again, 20-something years ago. Yeah. Um, Lauren Hill gets pregnant. Just like in my book, Purpose. Yeah. You know? And I guess at one point, you didn't know, well, either you didn't know or she didn't know whether her first child was yours or, or Rohan Marley's? Yeah, I mentioned it all in the book. Yeah. It's funny because when I interviewed Praz and I mentioned the pregnancy thing, he said he had no idea. He talked about how him and Lauren Hill kind of had like a, there was like a love triangle. It was him, his wife, Lauren Hill. Okay. And he mentioned that Lauren Hill got pregnant. Okay. Did you know about all this happening? Man, I was counting my money, man, to be honest with you. I mean, okay. I knew there was riff going around, but I was focused, man. I was focused on trying to get this money. Well, I mean, once again, it's 20-something years ago. So um, I'm like 40, going on 47 now. So we're basically talking about something when I was 20-something. So if he doesn't have no idea or no memory, I, I don't know what to say to that. Okay. What do you think was the final step when all three of you decided that the Fugees are, are breaking up after having such massive success and everyone's waiting for that third album? And you know the third album was going to be huge. You know, you didn't know whether the solo careers were going to work out or not. You know, for sure, because no one knows the future. And you have this huge success. What, what exactly was causing that? I really think that from a fan's perspective, that was your eye view. Yeah. I think from my perspective, I saw things totally different. And that was? Um, because that's why I told you about my teen. Um, I knew that it would be the next move, and I knew that my next move would have to do with production, and it would have to do with producing. So I was inspired by what Salam Remy was doing, what Diamond D was doing, and everyone was doing, and I was like, yo, I, I have to... I want to make a producer's album, you know? And I didn't know what that would be yet at the time. Um, that's how I personally uh, was thinking. Because look, right, till today, right, no member has, uh, says, um, I'd like to hold a, 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 um, a press conference, you know? <laughs> The Fuji's has officially broke up. That don't exist. It's never been said, you know? It's like drinking water. Whatever happened, happened. On our end, I was just constantly, I was so tied up into doing music and into production that I didn't even know that the carnival would be the carnival, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I just know I'm constantly working on music, right? And then I had an idea. So I go in and I just know that I have to paint an artistic picture as a, a producer. What that would be, I wasn't sure yet. 